Mayapur Navdweep Dam Ki Jai Ganga Mai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Gaura Premanandi All glories to the assembled devotees All glory to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glories, all glories to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. Uh, today we continue our study of Srimad Bhagavatam. We're in the first canto, 19th chapter. Today's text is number 37. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Ata prichami sangsidhim yogi nam paramam gurum purushasye yat karyam mriyamanasya starvata Ata prichami sangsidhim yogi nam paramam gurum purushasye yat karyam Mriyamanasya sarvata Ata prichami sangsidhim Yoginam paramam gurum Purushasteya yatkaryam Mriyamanasya sarvata Please chant. Ata Purushami Sid Ata Purushami Sam Sidhim Yoginam Paramam Gurum Purushasya Yatsa Karyam Britya Manasya Sarvataha Purushami Sam Sidhim Yoginam Paramam Gurum Purush Purushasye hayat karyam, mayamanasya sarvata. Hare Krishna. Ata prichami sam sitim, yogi nama paramam guru. Purushasye hayat karyam, mayamanasya sarvata. Hare Krishna. Atha prichami shamshidhim yoginam prichamam gurum purushashya yat karyam mriyamana shasharvatha. Hare Krishna. Ata pruchami sansidim yoginam paramam gurum purusha seha yatakaryam riyamanas the sarvata Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ataha, therefore, pruchami beg to inquire. Sang Sidhim, the way of perfection. Yoginam of the saints. Paramam, the supreme. Gurum, the spiritual master. Purushasya, of a person. Iha, in this life. Yet, whatever. Karyam, duty. Mriyamanasya. 
of one who is going to die. Sarvata in every way. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. You are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. This is Maharaj Parikshit speaking to Sukadev Goswami. You are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons and especially for one who is about to die. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Unless one is perfectly anxious to inquire about the way of perfection, there is no necessity of approaching a spiritual master. A spiritual master is not a kind of decoration for a householder. Generally, a fashionable materialist engages a so-called spiritual master without any profit. The pseudo-spiritual master flatters the so-called disciple, and thereby both the master and his ward go to hell without a doubt. Maharaj Parikshit is the right type of disciple because he puts forward questions vital to the interest of all men, particularly for the dying men. The question put forward by Maharaj Parikshit is the basic principle of the complete thesis of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now let us see how intelligently the great master replies. Translation again. You are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons, and especially for one who is about to die. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamrita Namane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gaurav Anipachani Nirvishesha Shuni Vadi Pashtati Deshitani Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chakshur Nubitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpa Trubya Shakrapa Sindhubya Eva Chapitanam Pav and Abyo Vaishnav Abyo Namo Namaha Hare Krishna so this is a fantastic verse. Uh, as Srila Prabhupada points out, uh, this question that is put forward by Maharaj Pariksha is the, brace, the basic principle of the complete thesis of Srimad Bhagavatam. This, this is what the entire Bhagavatam is based on, is the inquiry of a qualified uh, disciple to a qualified spiritual master, uh, inquiring with emphasis, begging, to understand what is the way of perfection for all persons, but especially for someone who is about to die. So someone who wants to wrap up this material life, uh, how does one become perfect? And it's asked in earnest, it's asked by a qualified um, disciple, and it's asked to a qualified uh, speaker. So we've been talking about this for a while. <clears throat> so, the circumstance, everything is perfect about this, uh, about uh, about what's going on here, about the instruction that we can receive from reading this verse. The circumstance is perfect because you have Maharaj preaching. Now, one might argue, wait, this circumstance isn't perfect because Maharaj Pariksit, he was overcome by providence and he became thirsty while he was out and he got cursed by an immature son of a Brahmana. You know, and it's, you know, some people might say that this circumstance isn't ideal, right? But actually it is ideal. And it was, it was set in motion by Krishna because it was time for Maharaj Pariksha to wrap up his pastimes. And it was also time um, for him to show by example, how each of us is also meant to wrap up our earthly pastimes, right? So, and he sees it in this way. He doesn't see oh, this is uh, this, you know, this uh, uh, um, immature son of a Brahmana, he, you know, he, he mistakenly cursed me. He, he took something and it was exaggerated. And so therefore we can counteract it. You know, so many great personalities show up to hear this conversation. Clearly, some of them could uh, reverse this curse with no problem. But that wasn't that wasn't uh, where his head was at. He was just understanding this was all done by Krishna's will. Uh, and so, uh, 
you know, the word of Krishna's devotee, even if he's a, uh, an immature one, uh, should not go um, uh, or should not be proven false. And so therefore, this is what this is what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to sit here. I, I know I'm going to die in seven days. So I want to make the best of this time. All right. So then he's inquiring from Shukadev Goswami, <clears throat> not just inquiring, but inquiring earnestly. He's begging. And so he's showing the proper the mood. So the circumstance for this instruction is perfect. Right. Um, now, Shukadev Goswami or someone like Shukadev Goswami, uh, he could always speak the Bhagavatam. He knows it. Right. So if the circumstance weren't perfect for this instruction, say, for example, it was just a casual circumstance. Now, let's just instead of uh, trying to think of Shukadev Goswami in a casual circumstance, let's just think of another saintly person uh, who who has this knowledge that they can give to others in sort of a casual situation like so in a, in 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 today's society let's say you know a highly elevated sannyasi he is uh invited by a neighbor and he he happens to be he happens to be there and there's a, a you know all the town got together and they're they're there at someone's house and and he says oh here uh, i'm introducing you to this this swami he you know he he uh He's a uh, he's a monk. He's doing this uh, self realization. Very very wise, intelligent and, uh, sadhu, right? And then so some of the guests they don't they don't know what a sadhu is, but they've you know heard about the, the phenomenon. They understand okay, this is supposed to be a wise saintly person. So they might say, oh okay, so tell me what's the meaning of life? And the sadhu might actually say some very uh, wise and deep things, but because of the atmosphere, because of the hearer, because it was just like a polite sort of way to start conversation. How do you talk to a guru? Well, you ask the meaning of life, right? That's not a, That's not an ideal circumstance for this instruction. The instruction could be perfect, but if the, if the hearer isn't earnest, if they're just being casual, then that's not, that's not a proper, uh, a proper perfect circumstance for the, for, for this sort of instruction. Then if you can think of another circumstance that's formal, but not serious. So that was a casual circumstance. So say, for example, and this is fairly common, where there's a formal uh, circumstance, but it's, it's more lighthearted. Uh, say, for example, a very pious family, their son has just graduated, right? So they're having a festival, they're having all the community over. And of course, they want to invite the family guru because Guruji has to give blessings to the son so that he can go off to IIT and be the head of his class and then be very successful and have a nice family and give, you know, plenty of grandchildren and all that. And so the family is nice and pious. So clearly they're going to invite the family guru and they're going to ask to ask for blessings to be to be uh, to be given to the son who's who's taking an important important step an important milestone right now it's a formal situation uh the family they're pious enough to know that in any sort of circumstance like this any life changing event any milestone any important milestone in life there should be uh some aspect of spirituality there to set the proper samskar so that's that's okay that's proper that's formal but it's not very serious because the parents really what they want, they, they want the blessing, as I mentioned, of the son to do well in his IIT at top of the class and they want him to be successful. That's the blessing that they want, right? They don't necessarily want the blessing to be, you know, you will become detached from all uh, material um, uh, sense gratification and, uh, and become successful in this life and go back to Godhead. The, the family at that point, at that particular function, you know, that might be a nice thing to hear, but really they just want the blessings on the son that he does well in school and that he becomes a successful, you know, uh, a successful um, person in his career, right? So that's another circumstance that it's formal, but it's not serious. So it's not ideal. It's not the perfect circumstance for this type of instruction, right? <clears throat> so... Here in today's verse, we see that not only is the circumstance perfect, 
right? It's, uh, you know, there's a person who is actually about to die. He's come to terms with it. He understands. Uh, and so he's asking the perfect uh, question that's applicable to everyone, not just to him who's about to die, but to every person, because he's asking about the way of perfection of life, right? And everyone is, everyone's goal, of course, is to protect, uh, perfect life. Of course, we have different ideas of what that means, what a perfect life, life is. But if we ask in earnestness, and we, we are qualified, and also the speaker is qualified, and the audience is also qualified, then, then, then uh, we will get uh, a, a, a favorable uh, instruction. So we have the inquirer. He's he's. So the circumstance is perfect. We have the inquirer. He's also uh, uh, in a perfect position. The speaker is certainly qualified. He's the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. The audience also is perfect. So you have all these saintly personalities and demigods coming down and listening to this conversation. Uh, that's also an important thing because uh, when there's a conversation going on like this, uh, it does it does matter uh, who else is there listening, right? Because you know some people are going to want to put their two cents in. Let's say you have a, a mostly nice crowd, and we, we've seen examples of this as well uh, um, uh, in our travels. I've I've seen situations like this where there are a group of devotees and they're listening to a, a highly elevated um, spiritual master talking. And there's someone in the group, they're sort of new, and they don't sort they don't really fully understand the conversation, but they're sort of also like a class clown. And so at some point they just feel like they have to interject something into the conversation. So they make some sort of lighthearted joke, you know, just to just to feel like they're being they're part of that conversation. And the mood gets spoiled, right? It wasn't the intention. The, intent, the intention was just that the person wanted to feel, you know, like they were part of that conversation and they did the only thing they knew how to do in order to bring themselves into that particular conversation. But the mood uh, that was that was there before is um, it gets soured by such a thing. So it also depends on on the audience. Right. So uh, those those who have read uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita know that before Lord Chaitanya went public with the uh, with the Harinam Sankirtan movement that he used to um, in, in, in the house of Srivas Thakur he used to hold private kirtans behind locked doors and only specific people would be able to enter uh, and it was to cultivate this very deep mood of kirtan to understand uh, <clears throat> What the what the, the the proper mood should be, what the what the proper consciousness should be, and uh, <clears throat> and so uh, in, on one occasion, someone they were they were eager, they wanted to they wanted to hear, but they weren't necessarily qualified. So they came and they they hid somewhere and they were listening, but it still it 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 changed the mood. Lord Chaitanya understood he he understood that someone was there that didn't quite belong, and so. So this also shows that the audience uh, is an important factor. So the circumstance, the uh, the inquirer, the speaker, the audience, th these are all important factors. And in this circumstance, in today's verse, they're all perfect, right? And so with all of these things being perfect, then we can get the perfect instruction. Then you also have the subject, which is perfect. And not only is the subject matter perfect, right? He, he asked, he not only ask the perfect question, but it becomes the thesis or the essence of the entire Srimad Bhagavatam, right? So it is the, the question, right? The question of all questions, which is applicable and essential for everyone. So that's where we are with today's verse. Now, <clears throat> since we're talking about uh, um something that's applicable for everyone uh going back to <clears throat> srimad bhagavatam 112 uh a, a few things that i just mentioned uh are also mentioned in srimad bhagavatam 112 uh so uh, that was that is uh, dharma projita kaitavo traparamo dramatsaranam satam vedim vastavam atrabastu shivaram tapo triangulanam 
Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Kate Kimvapare Ishvara Sadyo Hridya Rudate Trakriti B Sushusti B Tatshanat. So <clears throat> first this verse is talking about rejecting uh materially motivated religion, right? The religious activities that are actually materially motivated. So as I was mentioning when I was talking about today's uh today's verse, the circumstance being perfect, um the other examples that I gave, the casual circumstance or the formal but not serious uh, circumstance, those are religious activities that are materially motivated, especially the second one where, where you know, there's a graduation ceremony. And the pious family understands at least there's an importance to bring, uh, you know, a saintly personality there, but they don't understand the true importance of why that saintly personality should be there. And so they're just, they want material blessings. So it's materially motivated, right? So this Bhagavat Purana, it rejects those, right? So it gets rid of those circumstances that are not ideal for the pure uh, instruction, right? So this Bhagavat Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart, right? So this is for the audience. It's, it, it can only be understandable by those who are fully pure in heart and then what is that highest truth that it's speaking of does anyone want to answer that anyone know that verse one one two the highest truth it's okay if you don't or if you're shy uh the verse continues that the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all right so just like in today's verse uh maharaj parikshit is asking uh what is the way of perfection for all persons right especially for one who's about to die but for all persons right so this is distinguishing reality from illusion for the welfare of all all right so today's <clears throat> today's verse is following along with this it's it's rejecting those religious activities that are materially motivated right you have the right circumstance you have the qualified uh hearer the qualified speaker the audience is also qualified and the subject matter is perfect because it is uh asking uh the speaker to distinguish reality for from illusion for the welfare of all right <clears throat> so another verse that comes to mind it's, it's very similar to today's verses from Bhagavad Gita 434. Uh, in that verse, we're advised uh, that if we want to learn the truth, then we should approach a spiritual master. And the reason why we approach a spiritual master is Jnaninas Tattva Darshanaha. The, the self-realized person, the Jnaninas, uh, they have tattva darshana. Tattva means uh, truth, and darshana means they see. So it's not only that they've heard the truth, they actually see the truth. They understand it. So if you want to know the truth, then you approach a spiritual master because they have seen the truth, right? So they have exactly what you are looking for. So that shows... Uh, the qualification of the guru. He has seen the truth, All right? Then also in that verse, we have um, uh, pariprashnena sevaya, right? So uh, there are submissive inquiries. Uh, so one should question that spiritual master, but should do it in the proper mood, right? So it should be submissive. It shouldn't be challenging. It shouldn't be casual. It should be just like in today's verse where he's actually begging because he understands that this is very important knowledge. It's applicable to everyone. Uh, so he asked with earnestness. So one should be submissive while, while asking it. And uh, I quote this verse often. And every time I quote it, I make sure I put this disclaimer in here because in the English language, for some reason uh, these days, uh, we tend to have problems with words like submissive and surrender and service. 
because these words in our conditioned experience mean that we are being exploited. If we're submitting to someone and we're uh, rendering service and we're surrendering, it usually means that we've been defeated and now we are going to be exploited by that person in the name of protection, right? In the material world, that's how things happen. Um, I'll, I'll even tell a story. There was, I was writing a, a blog uh, long, long ago, probably 10 years ago. And this verse was the subject of that particular blog. And so I made, uh, um, I made two versions of a graphic. One, one was the old, uh, and I'm sure some, some people may have seen, um, there's this bumper sticker and it says question authority, right? And there are different versions of it, but it, the version I made was, you know, it was a, the, the font style was very, uh, you could call it loud. You know, there were things shooting out of it. And then next to it, there was a silhouette of a, a punk rock kid with uh, uh, a spiked mohawk, right? Because this is, this is the mood behind that question authority, you know, that, that uh, the idea is that uh, there's actually, you should, you should actually question whether the person actually has the authority to instruct you. That's, that's the mood behind this, that particular uh, statement. Of course, the, the statement wasn't originated by the, by the punk rock movement that came uh, much before. Um, of course, well, the statement actually originates here in Bhagavad Gita, um, that we should question authority, but we should do it submissively. Anyway, so the other graphic that was there, so there was one with the bumper sticker with the, you know, the very loud, uh, 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 how do you say, challenging, you know, question authority. And then there was another graphic I made that had, instead of the silhouette of, you know, this punk rocker, it had the silhouette of someone who had his hands folded and he had his head bowed down and he's submissively. Uh, questioning authority and so i paraphrased this verse about uh um it says well basically it said uh uh submissively question a proper authority uh because uh he can instruct you in the ways of truth because he has you know he has seen it firsthand and so a friend of mine while i was making these graphics uh saw that and they said, I, I would take submissively out of there. The word submissive, I would take that out of there. I would change that. And I said, okay, well, if it were, if it were my quote, you know, if it were something that I was just making for today's audience, sure, maybe I would consider that. But this is actually Krishna's words. It's not my words. So I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to change Krishna's word there. Right. So, but it occurred to me at that point in time, because this was a devotee that made the suggestion. And they certainly meant well, and they didn't actually want me to edit Krishna. They didn't want me to change his words. Um, but it occurred to me that we we have this tendency to, when we hear certain words, uh, they, they, they have a negative effect on us. And this is one of those words. And it's unfortunate because it's a very important thing to have. We have to be submissive to Krishna and also to the spiritual master, because the spiritual master... Uh, as we sing every morning, Shakshad Hari Tvena Tamasa Shastra, the spiritual master is the is non different from Krishna. He's the direct representative of Krishna, right? And so, therefore, he is to be respected as Krishna because he is only giving you instructions uh, uh, based on spirituality, based on the shastra, right? So, because he is a transparent via medium to Krishna, then the same respect should be given there. So, there has to be this. Um, submissive mood because without the submissive mood uh, uh, then th there's no there's no proper reciprocation there we're not showing that we actually value that they have seen the truth they have that tattva darshana and and we're interested in in in, in as today's verse is saying begging to, in, in earnest to understand what that is and so not only should the inquiry be submissive, but there should also be service, right? There should be service involved, sevaya, paripashnena sevaya. Now, why should there be service, right? 
this is a reciprocation. So the spiritual master, he's giving you a priceless gift, something that uh, it, you can't you can't begin to figure out how valuable this gift is because it's the it's the the gift of 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 uh, of of not just liberation but of returning to one's eternal position and eternal relationship with Krishna. All right, you can't repay that. Right. You can't bring a mountain of money. You can't, you know, there's no way to repay it, but to reciprocate because they're giving you such a valuable tool. Then you do sevaya. So sevaya means whatever, whatever, you know, they're doing, you, you help them, you assist them. You, you know, so if, if you see the guru and he's out working in the garden, you assist him working in the garden, right? You do seva. If he's uh, performing deity worship, you help him collect the, necess uh, the necessary items for worship, like that. Whatever the case may be, sevaya. So that reciprocation should be there to show that you you actually value what's going on. So this verse, uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita 434, it's also talking about the qualification of the hearer, the qualification of the speaker. Uh, it's talking about the actions that should be taken in that relationship between the speaker and the hearer, the submissive inquiries. And it's also talking about the mood, right? It shouldn't just be that, you know, we're asking questions, but we're asking an earnestness and we're, we actually want to change our, uh, our behavior, our lifestyle to go in line with that truth that we are now getting from the spiritual master. So all of these things, again, they're there. The qualification of the speaker, the qualification of the hearer, uh, what appropriate actions are to be taken in that relationship, and most importantly, the mood that one should have. So today being the <clears throat> anniversary of the incorporation of ISKCON, that was 57 years ago today, I wanted to also mention that Srila Prabhupada, he took this instruction, uh, this phenomenon very seriously, right? The what What is the proper qualification <clears throat> of a disciple? The proper qualification of a guru, uh, what is the appropriate uh, interaction there, and also the necessary mood, right? So an example of that is that Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, he uh, recognized immediately that his Srila Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, uh, was a saintly person. And so he inquired from him, He and he especially heard from him when he would go and he would sit and he would just hear he would hear bhakti saranta saraswati uh preach krishna consciousness and srila bhakti saranta saraswati Thakur, he took note of that he understood oh this one that that abai charan he he's a good listener he listens and so being <clears throat> being the qualified guru and understanding that he had a qualified disciple he gave him the instruction you go preach in the west and it's not that he didn't give any of his other disciples that instruction, right? But our Srila Prabhupada, he took it with the right mood, right? And his mood was inspired, our Srila Prabhupada's mood was inspired by uh, the commentary that Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur wrote on, uh, on, on his, uh, his commentary to verse 242 in Bhagavad Gita, where he mentions that the instruction of the spiritual master should be the life and soul of the disciple. It should be, it's not just something that should be taken lightly or should even be seen as, you know, something that's important, but the most important thing, the very, your very reason for living is to follow the order of the spiritual master, right? So <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada, being inspired by that commentary by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he went and <clears throat> he underwent a very arduous journey, very late in age. Uh, it was his 69th birthday while he was crossing the Atlantic. He suffered two heart attacks on the way. <clears throat> and he surrendered to Krishna. He said, okay, Krishna, I, I don't know what you're, what you're doing, why you're sending me here, but this is what, I, this is what I'm doing spiritual master he gave me this instruction it's my life and soul if you want to make me dance you make me dance this is i'm i'm just a puppet right so you do what you do and so he surrendered to krishna and he got there he got to america 
and it didn't go his way immediately. You know, Krishna wanted to test his uh, his determination, his dedication. So certain things happen. We've, you know, most of us have read Lila Amrita. You know, uh, uh, he was robbed. Uh, you know, his dictaphone and all these things. Typewriter were all stolen from him. So it's you know the items that he was trying to serve Krishna with. So some people would take that as a sign that oh, Krishna, see, there's no one here that's worthy of hearing your message. They're just you know, taking all these things and, you know, and he even, he even, um, a couple of times he, he, he would check on the schedule to see when the next steamship was going to go back to India. He would just check. He wouldn't go. He never, he'd never actually go, but he was checking. And so, so Krishna wanted to see, okay, how determined. And so when Srila Prabhupada showed, well, look, you know, I, I, I went through all this and I'm, I'm going to stay, I'm going to do it. This is, this is my life and soul. And so therefore <clears throat> he stuck to it. And then, and then uh, Krishna sent him some very nice, uh, well, some very strange disciples, let's say that, right. Who turned out to be very nice. And then, so 57 years ago on this day, Srila Prabhupada incorporated ISKCON. <clears throat> so, so this has a big, a huge impact on all of us. Um, and it was because he had this mood. He understood the, the the qualification of the disciple. He understood the qualification of the guru. He understood what the, the appropriate um, interaction is and the appropriate mood. And so he did. With faith, he came to America and 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 followed uh, the order of his spiritual master perfectly to preach to the Western world. <clears throat> um, oh. One little tidbit about the incorporation of ISKCON since today's the anniversary. <clears throat> um, since I'm an editor, uh, uh, when I was editing curriculum uh, for, for one of the schools that I volunteer for, generally the curriculum there is there a team of devotees goes through different commentaries and they copy and paste uh, <clears throat> different commentaries and they put it in these study guides and then uh, I, as the editor, had to go through and just make sure everything was uh, following a proper format and that, uh, say, for example, some commentaries from the previous Acharyas, um, when they were translated, instead of uh, writing things like Srila Prabhupada does with the uh, Roman transliteration with diacritics, like so Krishna, for example, K, R with a dot, S with a dot, N with a dot, and then A. So you can phonetically pronounce it the way it's meant to be, Krishna. Um, some some of the translators of the previous acharyas they they you know wrote out the word Krishna, K R I S H N A, so that someone who would see that they wouldn't you know they wouldn't mispronounce it as Kursna or something like that. So they would they would more phonetically be able to say. It. So in these study guides and also um, through the Prabhupada, the way. Anytime he uses a Sanskrit term that's not a proper noun, not a name or a place, he'll put it in italics, right? Unless it's in the, it actually in the translation, then he doesn't. So just, you know, to make to make it flow the same way, I'd, I'd be going through and I'd, so I'd change, you know, K-R-I-S-H-N-A from these commentaries to K-R-S-N-A with the dots, right? And do the italics, et cetera. Uh, and then also sometimes the translators of some of the previous acharyas, when they're referring to Krishna and they write him, they don't capitalize H or he like that. Because you, uh, technically, grammatically, you don't have to. But since Srila Prabhupada did, and it's more of a sign of respect, um, then, you know, I switch things like that. So anyway, one day I was I was going through, it was either Sriya Sopanishad or Nectar of Instruction. I was going through <clears throat> the... Uh, the commentaries and i saw that you know there was a k-r-i-s-h-n-a so I, I immediately just instinctively went to correct it but then i realized wait this is a copy and a paste from Srila Prabhupada's purport and so i thought hmm that's interesting and then the same paragraph there was you know it said krishna consciousness and it was written with the dots and so i i i, I thought hmm this is this is a strange one so i went back to the source material and as it turns out when Srila Prabhupada in, incorporated ISKCON, which is International Society for Krishna Consciousness, uh, he actually wrote out K-R-I-S-H-N-A, consciousness, when he incorporated it. So anytime in the books when Srila Prabhupada writes out the entire um, 
name of International Society for Krishna Consciousness, he, we will actually write K-R-I-S-H-N-A because that is the name of the incorporation. If he just is talking about Krishna consciousness, you know, practicing your Krishna consciousness, then it's, you know, spelled with the dots, with the diacritics. So that was just a tidbit that, I, you know, I, <clears throat> I read those purports before and it never really occurred to me that sometimes he, he would use one and sometimes he would use the other. But for the incorporation, since obviously you, you fill out a 501c3, uh, you can't use diacritics. <laughs> but you want to make sure people are pronouncing it right. So people wouldn't say it's the international society for curse and consciousness. So he wrote it out like that. So just as a, as a little tidbit, something that I noticed and now, now that once you notice, you see it in, in the purports, if it's written out like that international society for Christian consciousness, it's always written like that. So, sorry, that was a little distraction. It was just something that, I didn't notice it until, uh, uh, let's see, it was two years ago when I noticed it. Before that, it never really occurred to me. Maybe everyone else has always known that. So, <clears throat> but the importance is, if we don't actually understand and follow this dynamic, the guru-disciple dynamic, meaning understand the qualification of the disciple, uh, the qualification of the guru, understand the appropriate actions that are taking place in that relationship and also most importantly the proper mood that one has seeing the spiritual master's uh uh instruction as our life and soul if we don't actually understand and follow this dynamic as Srila Prabhupada pointed out in the purport there is no necessity of approaching a spiritual master that's a pretty heavy statement right especially since you know we have in Srimad Bhagavatam, we have verses like Akama Sarva Kama Uva, Moksha Kama Udharadi. Whether you have no material desires at all, or you're full of material desires, or you're desiring liberation, whatever, you should approach Krishna. And obviously, the spiritual master being the representative of Krishna, you should be able to approach the spiritual master uh, in that sense with everything, even if, even if you are slightly materially motivated. Because the idea is, after and taking instructions from the spiritual master, those material tendencies uh, are then melted away. You know, reality distinguished from illusion that happens when, when you're inquiring from the spiritual master, right? But today, the, 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 the statement in today's purport seems a little different. So there's actually no necessity of approaching a spiritual master if you're not actually following this dynamic, right? It shouldn't be a fashionable thing. As the purport says, we should be perfectly anxious to inquire about the way of perfection. And that is the reason to approach a spiritual master, right? There's no other reason. So this this reminded me, and th there's no there's no contradiction there between akama sarva kama va moksha kama dardi, and this idea of there's no necessity of approaching a spiritual master if if we're not actually inquiring about the way of perfection. Uh, I'll tell a little story that that uh, that will show uh, uh, how how these things are that coexist together they're both true uh, i have a few few friends who from time to time they set up uh, when they're doing sankirtan they set up a table uh, uh, it's called ask a monk so they'll sit there and there's just a sign on the table that says ask a monk and then it says any topic so the idea is you can you can ask anything you want right and of course they hope that someone's going to ask about spiritual topics but you know you're set up in the middle of a city people are walking by they see a sign and you know they'll they'll just ask whatever so one of my friends who who did this ask a monk uh, booth um he was sharing with me some of the stories of of his interactions with people and so one fellow just said you know walking by he said oh well, who's going to win the world cup cuz it says any topic right and so of course he's he answers uh, in the way that a devotee would answer, you know, actually no one, no one wins the world cup. You know, what's, what's there to win, you, you, you know, uh, life after life, we're trying to accumulate all these, all this wealth, all this sense gratification, all these, all these uh, accreditations. Uh, but it, it, it doesn't serve us at the time of death. It, it, we have to get rid of it all. So what is the actual profit there? If instead we would uh, spend our time, looking into spiritual matters into into our eternal situation 
then and only then can there be true benefit. So to answer your question, who will win the World Cup? Nobody. Nobody wins. Neither of the teams win. Nobody in the audience wins. Nobody wins. It's just a, it's just a complete waste of time, et cetera, like that. Right. Um, so <clears throat> it's not that you know, in, in this in this situation that, that I explained earlier with say that you have a pious family and their son's graduating, so they, they, they invite the family guru. Of course, they also invite a lot of other things, you know, a lot of other people and they have a lot of other uh, things going on. So you could see that their um, motivation uh, can be split. So it's good that they invited the family guru, but the the uh, the mood in which they were asking wasn't wasn't perfect right so it's not that um it's not that if one understands the value of group but doesn't have the proper mood they shouldn't actually you know have a guru it's that they should have the proper mood and proper mentality and the proper relationship with the guru they shouldn't ask the guru for material ben benedictions right um they should only ask the guru about spiritual matters the important things because otherwise you're just wasting the guru's time why is why is he even there right so when one approaches the guru one should just ask for these things so in that situation for example because like i said it's important for a samskar there should be the spiritual uh uh um uh, uh undertones there um but if we still have these other material motivations, then, you know, have yourself, have yourself uh, two parties or two aspects of the parties. Don't invite the family guru to this, you know, thing that's all about uh, uh, enjoying and this and that and the other thing, but, you know, have that aspect if that's what you're attached to, but then you go separately to the guru and then you ask him blessings, but you don't tell him what blessings you want. So don't say, can you bless him to be top of his class and this and that and the other. You ask for the blessings because they understand that when it all comes down to it, success or failure it's not based on material situations it's based on spirituality so if that message is then given then okay then you understand so maybe you still will try for uh, material success because you're not at that point in your in your spiritual life yet but at least you'll have that some scar where you know that actually that's not the goal of life and essentially when you're ready then you you come and and you sincerely ask from the spiritual master right so this is this is what um, this is what this relationship is meant to be. Uh, so, <clears throat> as I mentioned, Sri Prabhupada exemplified uh, these qualities. He showed uh, what the what the qualifications of a disciple are. He showed what the qualifications of a guru are. He showed what the appropriate uh, actions within that relationship are, and the proper mood in which to take. And so he showed the perfect example. So it's up to us to understand and follow that example. So each of us has an opportunity and a duty, not just an opportunity, but a duty uh, to do this to the best of our ability, to be the best possible disciples we can be, um, to not take our instructions of the guru for granted, to not take them lightly, to not take them casually. The uh, when we have a circumstance where we're talking to a self-realized soul, one who has tattva darshan, one who has seen the truth, we shouldn't waste time. We should we should be earnest. We should be begging them to understand what what you know what it is that that they have understood by the mercy of their spiritual master. Uh, so, yeah, this verse, today's verse, and the other verses that I quoted, this uh, these all really show the importance of, of, of this relationship between the guru and disciple, what kind of questions to ask, uh, what the mood should be behind it. It should be beneficial to everyone. And uh, of course, today, today's verse, beneficial to everyone, especially someone who's about to die. Uh, Srila Prabhupada would often say, you know, we don't know when we're going to die, so we should always act as if we're going to die. Uh, at, at any moment. So this should be a pressing matter for all of us, right? And uh, uh, having a guru shouldn't be just a fashionable thing that we do. We should we should uh, take full uh, full advantage of the of the opportunity that we have in having a spiritual master. Uh, we shouldn't take the that relationship casually. 
Um, so it's 8.42. Uh, I'm going to end there and see if there are uh, any questions or comments or further discussions on this subject matter, or any appreciations of Srila Prabhupada on this anniversary of the incorporation of ISKCON 57 years ago. Hare Krishna, if anybody has questions, please just go ahead. Um, very, um, very serious uh, topic was discussed today. Um, yes. A lot for us to think about, especially when you gave that example of, uh, you know, we do that all the time, uh, but I'm thinking, I should think through and make sure that I'm not asking for uh, material benedictions when we have, uh, because we tend to do that any important occasion, we tend to have a, um, you know, a, a home program. And, and, uh, and a lot of us do that. Um, but again, that word consciousness, when uh, Shri incorporated it and called it Krishna consciousness. We have to, you know, not do things uh, without thinking just because, mm. uh, but to pay attention. Um, one thing I was wondering is, you know, the uh, ultimate truth is differentiating between reality and illusion. So which one is it because I want to uh, understand the difference between illusion and reality that I approach or do I approach and that's how he gets that clarified in my mind. I'm trying to figure out which one is it. And, and for me, I mean, I did not have that question in my mind. I, I just found my way into, uh, you know, into Srila Prabhupada's movement. I, the, I did not have this strong desire to understand the absolute truth. I did not know that I had to find out. And, and yeah. as I have, I'm listening more and more, I am understanding that that is the purpose of life and mm -hmm. I'm not asking for, you know, <laughs> uh, my kids' uh, good grades. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's both because we also understand in Bhagavad Gita, there are four types of people that approach Krishna. Mm -hmm. the uh the the one who's in distress one who's uh, uh in need of money mm -hmm. uh, uh the inquisitive mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, uh and the uh, uh distress money artha uh, uh, yeah the inquisitive and the one who's one who's searching after knowledge th those th those seem similar so yeah so two of them are going to be actually trying to distinguish reality from illusion. And the other two are actually trying to get something. Mm -hmm. Now, all of them will have the opportunity because the spiritual master is expert mm -hmm. in, you know, letting you know, okay, so basically what you're looking, you're looking for these things. And then eventually you're going to find out that those aren't really what you're looking for. And you are looking for spirituality. Mm -hmm. So when you're approaching a spiritual master at first, <clears throat> as long as you have the intelligence to actually, you know, go to someone who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And if you have sincerity, sincerity to follow them and then gradually, um, gradually, if we start losing our tendency to enjoy materially and actually start putting that priority on our spiritual life, then the benefit will be there. So at first it doesn't matter. Um, if we have that inclination or not, but it should be that eventually through the instructions of the spiritual master, we are able to distinguish reality from illusion. Mm -hmm. So it really just means distinguishing materialism from spirituality, because that's what it all comes down to. So am I doing this for myself? Is this self-conscious or is this Krishna conscious? Mm -hmm. That's what uh, distinguishing reality from illusion is. If I'm, if I'm doing it for myself, it, myself is the center, it is the illusion. And if I'm doing it with actually with Krishna as the center, then that's reality, right? The difference between the spiritual world and the material world. Is that, is that? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, yes, it does. Uh, 
answer the question. And, and I think that also leads into my appreciation of uh, Srila Prabhupada and what he has started. If it was not for this, I don't think I would have ever uh, understood because everywhere else it is just, you know, keep going on, you know, just do it because it was always done without understanding, without understanding what the real purpose is. Uh, mm. And, and it took me a long time to uh, understand that. Now, of course, it's going to take even longer to fully apply it. But uh, it took a long time for me to understand what the purpose is. And uh, um, you're, you're not alone. It took me <laughs> also a long time. And, it's, and, and it'll be a long time before uh, I, I, I perfect it, of course. <laughs> but yeah, as, as we just have to constantly be aware of what the situation is we have to be constantly aware of what our material tendencies are the conditioning that we have and we have to take note of those things and as we're following the orders of the spiritual master gradually uh, our, our material conditioning has less of a hold on us and so we we melt away that that conditioning and that's that's the process uh, mother vindyavali you have your hand up Hare krishna Hare Krishna, the Lord pranams all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, today's, uh, this, uh, your explanation and everything, it was very, very much helpful. And I practically uh, experienced last week uh, with my Guru Maharaj and his Guru Ma. And when I touched their feet, I don't know what happened to me. I couldn't even, now I am not able to talk. Mm. I just got tears and then I was overwhelmed and I don't know you said Paripas Nena Sevaya I wanted to ask so many things to him but not even a single question I got remember mm. I didn't ask anything and mm. just I was so happy to serve them that day and then I just overwhelmed and I don't know what to say even now I just got tears and then I said I, I'm so grateful to listen to all your uh, lectures and then I am so blessed. That's all. Nothing else I could say. Uh, yeah. uh, so just all my words were stopped and I couldn't say anything. Even when you are saying that for Prasnayana I wanted to ask so many things. But I yeah. ask. <laughs> first time I met him that close and then both Guru Ma and Guru, Ma, uh, Guru Maharaj uh, and I couldn't ask anything. A, a similar thing happened with Dhruva Maharaj when, when he finally saw Lord Vishnu. He he was speechless. He did he, he, he did, speechless. He, everything. And then Lord Vishnu had to touch him on the head with a conch shell so he could actually understand yeah, what was going on. <laughs> when I was touching his feet and he just touched my head, you know, yeah. something, some vibration I Lucky. had. I don't know how I cannot explain that. So that's yes. what my full experience. And like you're saying that when, thanks to Prabhupada Ji and what he did 50 years back. So because of that, we are in this. And you know, we read Bhagavatam from childhood, Bhagavad Gita Slokas. I used to say that. But I never went into this depth that to learn you know, what it is there inside. Like Parikshit Maharaj was asking those questions for all of us only. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I know uh, how if that, if, like you said, Prabhupada went to all the difficulties in the ship and uh, and he couldn't te preach anything in the West for in the beginning. And he wanted to go back. No, he didn't do that. Yeah. So, but the way he, he just did, today we're all benefited with that. And uh, if you would not have done that, we won't be in this today. We won't be like this, listening to yeah, Bhagavatam yeah. and going through. That's yeah, what so thanks. Actually, yeah, it's our, yeah. our debt. That's why I said it's our responsibility, not just the opportunity that we have because of Srila Prabhupada, but it's also a responsibility that, you know, look how much he went through. We didn't go through anywhere near that much. Yet. <laughs> no, uh, but, no. But we should. We should. We should go through as much as possible, whatever it takes um, to help spread this message of Krishna consciousness uh, as, as a repayment for what he did for us you know it's it's just that's the reciprocation so yeah once we actually see it as not just a opportunity but a duty 
then slowly, slowly, you know, things, things can, uh, can grow from there and then we can progress in the understanding. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for a nice yes. class. Thank you. Thanks there was to Prabhupada Ji. Yeah. There was another hand up, but it went down. Uh, yeah, sorry. it was Golokananda Mataji. Um, I, I texted her, but she's not able to come back. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I don't see any other hands up. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. Srila uh, Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. 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 Jai.